Program countdown. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. The following is a WLYH-TV action sports special. Billy's 89, a season of change. Sponsored by Henneyes Tire Service in Lebanon and York. We hope you enjoyed today's Phillies game from Wrigley Field here in Channel 15, and we welcome you to Phillies 89, a season of change. For the next 30 minutes, our preview of the coming season, and join us on Thursday after the Phillies Cubs game from Wrigley Field for part two of our series. We'll take a look at some of the Phillies minor league prospects for the upcoming year. You know, when Dallas Green left this organization for Chicago after the 1981 season, his dealings with his former employer prompted the Cubs to be labeled Phillies West. Well, this year, you might call the Phillies Cardinals East. There are plenty of new faces, many formerly of St. Louis. Topping the list is rookie field manager Nick Leva, the former St. Louis third base coach under Whitey Herzog. Never has this man seen so much uncertainty on a ball club heading into a season. You know, I think I'm coming into a, into a situation where, uh, you know, we do have a lot of question marks. Uh, you know, a couple even health question marks, but... Uh, you know, that we're in a situation where we're trying to rebuild, we're trying to regroup. Uh, we haven't been a very good ball club for the last couple of years, and, uh, you know, we've been willing to go out and make some moves, uh, some risky moves, uh, people might think. But, uh, you know, last year we lost 96 games. We had to do something. We had to go out and show the people in Philadelphia, show Major League Baseball that we are willing to make some changes in order to be able to compete at the level we, uh, we think we can. Many fans are no doubt hoping that Leva can bring results similar to those that his old boss, Whitey Herzog, brought to St. Louis. Nick says he won't and can't be a clone. Well, you know, a lot of people think uh, I'm going to bring over the running style and everything that the Cardinals have. Sure, I'd like to do that, but uh, you just don't have the, the type of people in a Vince Coleman and Ozzie Smith and Willie McGee, those type of people that can run. But I am going to bring over the aggressive style that, uh, that Whitey uses. Uh, I think uh, there's not asking too much. I think we've got enough people here that we can afford to play aggressive. We're going to try to make things happen like we have in the past. We're trying to set up where we have a good defense and, uh, you know, good pitching staff, and I think that's the name of the game. We've set up our bullpen. I think Whitey, Whitey will be the first one to say you can't win without a bullpen, and any time uh, a manager has the luxury of a Jeff Parrott and Steve Bedrosian down there, I think it's, uh, you know, it's, it's just a great thing for a manager to have. The one thing Leva has tried to copy from Herzog is the surrounding of himself with quality coaches. He brings in Dennis Menke for the hitters, Darrell Knowles for the pitchers. Menke's top task is dealing with a team to top the league in strikeouts a year ago. Well, they are a, a very aggressive team, very uh, aggressive in swinging. I think if I can get across to the point that once you get two strikes on you, that if you go up in the bats, you still are going to have uh, bat speed, but you're also going to have more bat control, and that's what I look for. Uh, you've gotten two uh, swings at the pitcher with getting two strikes on you. Now you have to protect the plate. I saw Rico Cardi, who I thought was probably one of the best two-strike hitters uh, that uh, the game has ever seen, and I saw what Rico did, and he ended up hitting 360 one year. So I think that it can pay off for the players uh, if they're willing to go and choke up for about an inch. I think you can overteach. I think that you can say too much to a hitter where it confuses him. And what I like to do, I like to try to keep it as simple as possible. His most interesting pupil is Juan Samuel. At 28 years old, so much accomplished, yet still so raw and undisciplined. Well, I think the biggest thing is that Sammy has gone back so far from what I've noticed this spring anyway, that he's gone back to his own style of hitting his, uh, that he's had success in. Uh, he's gotten a little more, more straight up uh, as far as his stance goes. Uh, he's trying to get on top of the ball. When I talk about on top of the ball, he's trying to hit the top half of the ball rather than the bottom half. Uh, and I see him where he's hitting to all fields right now. So if he can stay with that same approach all year, I think you're going to see Sammy uh, back to that same offense that uh, we're used to. Darrell Knowles says his theory of pitching is strike one, meaning get the ball over the plate and get ahead. He will also have to deal with a staff that had plenty of problems with base runners. We are trying to rectify that. We are, we are going to alter the way we throw the ball to the plate and I've already spoken to the staff about it and uh, they've all accepted it and I think they understand where I'm coming from, and I really don't feel that's going to be a, a problem of major proportions as it was last year. How much of pitching is the guy behind the plate? Well, I think it's, it's certainly part of it because 
the pitcher likes to have confidence in the catcher that he's throwing to. Uh, we like to have confidence in knowing that the catcher is calling the game the way we want the game to be called. And of course, uh, uh, it's nice to know that the catchers can throw too. And, and we're at a point now where we have three, three catchers here in the Tom Nieto, Lake, and uh, Darren Dalton that, that we know they can throw. And uh, uh, we don't know who the, our, our two everyday catchers are going to be. That's not my department, but uh, whoever it is, we know they're, they're going to be at least able to call a ball game and to throw the ball. Juan Sumwell's counterpart here is Bruce Ruffin. Last year, the 25-year-old lefty redefined the term wild by throwing balls on the screen and behind hitters. I thought you weren't going to ask that. <laughs> uh, I really don't know. You know, Bruce, Bruce is, a, is, is a nice young man. Uh, uh, he's got a great arm. He's got great ability. Last year, he got in a, in a rut. Uh, and I think he lost a little bit of his confidence. Uh, I, I know it had something to do with the starting and going into the bullpen. Uh, that's not going to be a problem this year because he's going to be one of our starters. He's going to be out there every fifth day. Uh, he's on a high right now. He's throwing really well. He's throwing strikes. I think that's also been a problem here in the past. Uh, I don't be, believe it has any reflection on the pitching coach that was here before or anything like that, but I do feel that maybe with the ball club last year and the way the club was going that they were kind of nibbling a little bit too much and uh, falling behind, and when you fall behind you have to come in and one thing leads to another. Uh, we don't want that to happen this year because we want everything to be on an upbeat nature. We want guys to be aggressive and, and, and pitch with confidence. Both Daryl Knowles and Dennis Mackey have worked before with Nick Leva. In his mind, it was just a matter of time before he got hired as a manager. But by the Phillies, well, them just going outside of the organization is something to talk about. They've had the same people around for a long time. They've hired within the organization. Don't get me wrong, they've been successful at it, but uh, just recently they haven't been. And I think they needed some new philosophies in here. They went out and got a new manager with new philosophies. I, I in turn, went out and got a new hitting instructor with new philosophies and a new pitching instructor with new philosophies. So really, we're changing the major parts of the, uh, of the game. And uh, you know, there's not no drastic change, but I think if the players can listen to different people and uh, li listen to maybe a little different method of teaching, uh, I think it's really going to help. And as for goals for this season in terms of wins and losses, now don't try and pin Nick Leva down to a specific number. Well, no, I think we just got to go out and play on a, on a everyday, day-to-day uh, -day basis. I think, if, like I said before, if we play within our capabilities, there's enough talent here where we're going we're gonna to surprise some people. We're going to win our straight games. But I hate to set a number on us because, uh, you know, if you, uh, if you don't achieve them, then you're upset. And if uh, you get to a certain point where you do achieve them, you want to go out and, and do better than that. So, uh, you know, there's a lot of people saying realistically, if we play 500 baseball, that we'd be a good ball club. But I, I don't look at it that way. If we go out and do the, the little things that uh, you need to do to win and play within ourselves, believe me, we're going we're gonna to be better in a 500 ball club. I don't think he can really afford to be any other way. I mean, he's an unproven commodity, and everybody knows that. So for him to uh, come in and, and act uh, all high and mighty wouldn't uh, wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. You know, he's just one of the guys. He's young, and uh, you know, he, he's just here to do the best that he can. And and uh, I think that kind of approach is going to be good for this ball club. Next, Mike Schmidt, a healthy shoulder and a healthy looking bat. We'll speak with him when Phillies 89, a season of change, continues here on Channel 15. Welcome back to Phillies 89, a season of change here on Channel 15. The Phillies 1988 record of 65 wins and 96 losses is the worst since 1972. If you don't remember, that season was managed for the most part by Frank Lucchese and closed up by Paul Owens. Also closed at third base, a red-headed rookie who got into the last 13 games of the season. 16 seasons and 542 home runs later, Mike Schmidt will again play the hot corner of the infield. But a shoulder injury and the possibility of free agency in the offseason almost ended his Phillies playing career. Uh, in the offseason when I was a free agent, uh, it was a real possibility that that might happen. Uh, obviously, I didn't want that to happen. There are some true fans out here that, that you know, don't want to come to Phillies games and not see me play. Uh, probably next year they're going to have to get used to doing that, but uh, hopefully this year I'll be able to satisfy their wishes for 162 games. Perish the thought of no number 20 at the hot corner in Veterans Stadium, not only from a performance standpoint, 
but from a promotion standpoint as well. Many of these fans are here in Clearwater for one reason, to see Mike Schmidt hit. Down at the farm, there are no answers right now. Last year, some thought it might be Howard Nichols. Uh-uh. Others thought Shane Turner. Eh, not this time. In fact, Nick Leva just wasn't want to think about it more than he has to. Well, yes, I think deep down you have to because, you know, he's coming off a serious injury. But, uh, you know, right now it looks like he's going to be with us, so I'm looking, I'm looking past that. But, uh, yes, uh, during the wintertime when, uh, you know, we didn't have him under contract, we didn't, uh, we didn't know what his uh, physical... Uh, uh, condition was going to be. I was concerned about it. Now uh, we have talked about Chris James moving over to third base, and uh, recently even we've we've thought about using Von Hayes if something was to happen to Mike. Uh, really, in all honesty, we're we're not we don't want to look at anything negative, and we're just hoping that Mike is uh, is healthy once again. Because believe me, if he's healthy and and capable of doing the things that he's capable of doing, uh, he's really going to be an added addition, a big plus to our ball club. Not many veteran players have run into a situation like this. Mike Schmidt turns 40 late in September. Nick Leva will be 36 in August. But the age difference shouldn't work against the player-manager relationship. Well, you know, I really haven't really even thought about that. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I think we're all talking about Mike Schmidt, and, you know, and he's, uh, he's 39 years old. You know, he's, uh, you know, he's had a great career, and, and I respect that. And I think uh, he respects me as a, as a baseball man and as a manager. Uh, he knows uh, he's known me for quite a while, but really I think age has nothing to do with, uh, with managing. I think it's the experience and the know-how, the way you're going to be able to run the game, the way you're going to be able to communicate with your players. And I, and I think um, being a young age is going gonna, is gonna to be a lot of help to me because I think in the long run it's going to help me to communicate a lot better with the players. I know where they're coming from. They know where I'm coming from. And believe me, uh, you know, I don't see any problem with, uh, with just having one player a little older than me. Uh, I'm very happy with uh, Nick as our manager. Uh, obviously, we have a new general manager from the St. Louis, has St. Louis background, and uh, he went into his old organization to find a quality guy, and he has. And anything beats rotating, those same old guys have been rotating around as managers for years. Instead of spending September in a pennant race, Schmidt spent most of the month in a Birmingham hospital, undergoing surgery on his injured rotator cuff. Right now, the medical report on Schmidt's shoulder is good. But the fact that he needed the knife has affected his setting goals for the coming season. No, I just am taking it day by day thus far with the shoulder uh, operation in the offseason. That uh, kind of limits what I can think of in terms of uh, goals. Uh, in terms of numbers I've uh, achieved in the past season, those have been with, uh, with a pretty much healthy body. I'm healthy now, but again, as I say, it's a day-to-day -day thing with me now. I'm still kind of just feeling my way through. I'm swinging the bat. I'm hitting the ball good. I'm free of any pain thus far. But uh, in the sense of goals, my goals are just to be healthy each day I wake up and go be able to put a uniform on. For the Phillies, the latter part of last season was spent with Chris James at third base. While Schmidt was not playing, he was watching. And he doesn't seem too worried about what would happen if he goes down. No, Chris did a very commendable job last year when he played third. Von Hayes can play third. We have a young kid named Joe Redfield from the Angels that can play third. Um, there's a chance I won't play 162 of them during the season. Uh, uh, even if I had a healthy shoulder, I probably wouldn't do that. But if I can get to 140, 145 starts out of the shoulder, I'll be more than happy, and so will Nick Lavin. For a veteran player who is very aware of his surroundings, it is pretty tough to stomach the clippings and preseason reports that read, Phillies going nowhere. If you wrote it or believe it, make sure you don't say it around Mike Schmidt. There's no uncertainty whatsoever here. I think every guy on this ball club thinks the Phillies got a chance to make some noise in the division. I think it's an advantage going into the season not to have great expectations of your younger players. Uh, it, it's sad when you have to think maybe 500 baseball is a goal of your team, but um, if they, some people want to think in those terms, that's all right with me. I personally think we can be a contender in this division. Uh, a lot of offensive talent here, some great young heart-throwing arms. We just haven't proven it before on the field. So let us get off to a good start and uh, find out how good our young players are. You'll see us make some noise. Next door to Mike Schmidt this season will be 30-year-old Dickie Thon, one of baseball's great stories. He was a fine-looking young shortstop for the Houston Astros until the fifth game of the 1984 season when a Mike Torres pitch got away and struck Thon in the temple. Since then, he has not spent a full season as an everyday shortstop. Last year with San Diego, 95 games. He batted 264 and stole 19 bases. And the Phillies are hoping for bigger things from him.
The obvious question is his physical shape. I feel good. I feel that I'm ready to play, and uh, you know I, I'm gonna have to prove it in the field. But I feel I feel that I'm gonna do a good job and have a good season. He looks real good. I have a lot of young pitchers that throw good, and uh, we have uh, with Tommy now here, and um, with new guys we have. Uh, I think we're gonna have a good team. Well, I think uh, every team in the big leagues have to have a goal to win in the championship, and I think that we should strive for that. And uh, if we don't think that way, we shouldn't be here. So uh, a lot of the guys they have a bad year last year, but you know I think we can still win this year. I think we are uh, look, looking to uh, win the, the division, but you know if you don't feel that way, you shouldn't play. Since Dickey left Houston a few seasons ago, his double play partners have included Randy Reddy, Tim Flannery, Joey Cora and Bip Roberts. I think it's safe to say that teaming with Tom Herr and the Phillies is a big step up. Yeah, it's going to be a lot easier to work with a guy like Tommy. That uh, he's, He had a lot of experience and he's a very steady player. So I'm uh, looking forward to have a good season with him. And the acquisition of Dickie Thon should really shore up the Phillies' shortstop problems that they've had the last few seasons. Thon's double play partner at second base will be Tom Herr. And that's who we'll speak with next when Phillies 89, A Season of Change, continues here on Channel 15. Welcome back to Phillies 89, A Season of Change here on Channel 15. On the field, the tag Cardinals East comes from pitcher Larry McWilliams, catcher Steve Lake, and utility man Kurt Ford. There is one other former Cardinal who does not come directly this way through St. Louis's Gateway Arch. Baseball card-wise, Tom Herr has yet to put on a Phillies uniform. As you may recall, the Lancaster County native was traded to the Minnesota Twins last midseason for Tom Brunanski. He is very much used to playing and being associated with winning baseball. And we asked him if some of that old St. Louis philosophy can rub off here in Veteran Stadium. Well, I don't know. We, we had a lot of talent over there. People, I think, sometimes underestimate the talent that we had in, on that ball club. But uh, we did go out and play every game hard, and, and uh, there were very few games that we gave away, very few games that we beat ourselves. And when you play so many games like we do in the major leagues, uh, the difference between the good teams and the great teams are those few games that you, know, you might let slip away that you should win. And, uh, when we were with the Cardinals, we had a knack to put those kind of games away. We, we didn't make mental mistakes, and these are the, the types of uh, intangibles that, that hopefully we can incorporate into the Phillies, too, just uh, eliminate the uh, mistakes and, and keep ourselves in a position to win more ball games. Tom played 15 games in St. Louis last season before being dealt to Minnesota for Tom Brunanski, but he did get a chance to play against the 88 Phillies. Well, they always looked like they were waiting for something to happen uh, instead of going out and making it happen. There was not a lot of life in the dugout. There wasn't a lot of uh, uh, what we call chatter or, or fire coming out of the dugout. And I think uh, when you play like that day in and day out, uh, that laid back approach can hurt you in that uh, some, some games you just can never get it up. And, uh, I think what we're going to try to do differently this year is get more people involved, especially the people that aren't playing in the game, get them involved in uh, cheering and slapping guys on the back and shaking hands and encouraging and that kind of stuff. The trade to Philadelphia not only brings her closer to his Landisville home, it reunites two men with a lot of mutual respect for each other. Uh, Nick's very knowledgeable about the game and I think he's very aggressive as, as everyone has uh, spoken about. And what he's trying to uh, bring over here is a more aggressive approach, especially on the bases. And uh, so we're, I think in spring training, we're going to try to run a lot. We're going to try to take extra bases and maybe take a little bit uh, more chances than we would ordinarily just to see uh, what we can do and what we can't do. Well, I'll tell you what, you don't realize that, uh, and I didn't realize that I've known Tommy for a long time, and until he wasn't in that Cardinal clubhouse, I didn't realize how much uh, he meant to a ball club. Uh, you know, these veterans have a, have a, have a way of just uh, keeping a team together, and I think Tommy's going to bring that to this ball club. Uh, in, in one year in St. Louis, we lost Jack Clark, we lost Tommy Herr, 
We lost Bob Porsche and even John Tudor. And believe me, when you don't have those type veterans, those type of leaders, silent leaders, guys that lead by example, uh, you don't realize it until they are, they are gone what they really do mean to a club. And, uh, you know, Tommy knows what it takes to win. He leads by example. And believe me, uh, he's going to be a great influence to this whole organization, not only to our ball club. Well, I think I see more of Whitey in the way he's uh, allowing his coaches to, uh, you know, he's delegating uh, responsibilities to his coaches much the same way Whitey did. Whitey didn't try to handle everything himself. He, he allowed his coaches to uh, take particular areas of the game, and, and that was their thing. And uh, Nick's doing the same thing, which I think is good. It keeps the coaches involved. It, it earns respect for them. And uh, Nick's in a learning process as well. So. Uh, not only will he uh, feel his way through spring training, but probably through uh, most of the season and, and just try and, trying to get a system that's going to work for him. Annually, the Cardinals and Phillies are picked to finish near the top of the division. This year is the exception, and Tom feels the change in Philadelphia is for the better. Well, there are so many new faces in camp that we really don't know what to expect as a team. And in that regard, there is a lot of uncertainty, and yet we know that we have a lot of talent here, and it's just a matter of applying that talent in the right direction. In the past, we've always, or this team has always been expected to do big things and never lived up to that. And I think I like this way better, where a lot of people aren't expecting us to do a whole lot, and I believe that we'll surprise people and, and uh, maybe be called overachievers, but I think we'll have a good ball club, I really do. The question marks on Tom Herr are physical in nature. He turns 33 on opening day, and no big deal, except the wheels are showing some wear. He was once good for 20 to 30 stolen bases a season. Now that stat has gone down a bit, but returning to the National League should be a shot of the arm, and maybe even in the legs, for the four sports star from Hempfield High. And he's not unhappy about returning to the National League in the form of the Phillies. In the past, they've had older managers who have been around, and and uh, there just didn't seem to be that good rapport between the players and the manager. Well, it's going to be important for us to develop a chemistry, and so far, I think we've been able to, to do that. This team wants to win. It wants to turn things around, and it realizes that it's better than it has showed in the past, and, and I think the fact that a lot of the pressure of being expected to win has been taken away. Uh, I think we'll be able to use that as a motivational tool and, and uh, really surprise some people. I do like what I've seen. I think we've got talent here, and it's just a matter of uh, getting everybody focused on team goals instead of uh, on what they can do for themselves. Thanks for joining us for part one of our series, Phillies 89, A Season of Change. Part two can be seen before tomorrow night's game from Wrigley Field and then after Thursday afternoon's game. Join us next for Action News right here on Channel 15. Phillies 89, A Season of Change has been sponsored by Hen Eyes Tire Service in Lebanon and York.